Hello everyone, so in this video we're looking at how to create a test class and some tests within it. So in the last part we tried to see if our accessors were working correctly. So right now we want to replicate this behavior within a test. So in order to do that let's just go to the counter class and create a counter test that will be a subclass not of object but of test case and we won't need the count instance variable. Now we can press common S. The counter test has appeared. You can see that there is a gray button on the left side. This gray button can be used to run to run all the tests within the class. So right now there are no tests so it's not doing much. But we will just create one that we'll call test counter is set and read. So let's just copy and paste the code right here. And on the last line, so the last expression, we want not to simply output the, the value of instance variable, but to run it against 7 and see if it's correct. So in order to do so, we can just self, write self assert, then C count, and we want to run this against equals seven. So this will try C count and see if it's equal to seven, which is what we'd set it up to, so it should work. So now let's press common S. So our method is created and you can see that the same way there is a gray button on the side of the name of the class, there is a gray button there, so this will run the test for this method. So if we click on it we can see that it ran and it passed. And if we click on this button there, it will run all the tests from within the class. So it will run only one for now. So when your tests are green, it's a good time to save your image. So we can go to the menu, Faro, save. And now let's create another test, but with another mindset. Let's try to do some test-driven development. So what that means is that we will write the test first, implement the methods it needs to be green. We will just try to make a test increment. We'll set the counter to 4, then increment twice. So we can do this with a semicolon. Increment, increment. And we want it to be equal to 4. And let's put this one at 2. OK. So this should add 2 to the counter, right? So let's compile it. We can see that the method has appeared, but if we click on the button there, it should fail, right? Because we didn't define the increment method, so let's click on it. Yeah, instance of counter did not understand increment. That's right, we have to define it, so let's go back to the counter class. Let's go here and create a new method called increment. That we want to add one to the count. Oop, no capitalize there. Count plus one. Let's compile it, common S. And you can see that the button is now on the left of the name of the method. That's because the system knows that there is a test called test increment that is linked to this method. So we can just click on this one, and now it's green. So if we go to our counter test and press the button, it is now running two tests, and the to have passed. So it's a good time to save our image once again. Save. And the same way we define increment, we'll go and define a test decrement. So we'll run the same method. Decrement, decrement, but right now I want the count to be zero because we subtract one twice. So if we compile common s, the method appears and if we run it, it should fail, and it's failing, because it doesn't understand decrement, because we didn't define it, so it's perfectly normal. Let's just go back to the counter class and define decrement, so it should subtract one this time. And once again, it recognizes that there is a test associated to this method with a button on the left, so we can just click on this one. It is green, and now if we click on the one, the counter test, it should run all the tests from within it. So we can see three tests have been run, 
three paths. So it's a good time to save the image. So in this video we'll learn how to create a class test and how to define some methods. And once again, the test-driven development is encouraged from within Faro as it is really simple to write tests and you will see in the next week how it is even easier to define methods on the fly, the method, the increment and increment we just wrote there.